NFL. And, you know, you bring up a good point when you mention the other projects from the other guys because, you know, I've, I've joked with you for years about the different bands and how many bands you play. And, I mean, you, you're a guy that just loves to play all styles of music. I mean, I'll never forget people that are listening years ago in my Halloween party, Overkill's drummer couldn't get in. And on the drop of the dime, you came up and did a, a set with Overkill for me. So that's always the type of guy you are. But you, you bring up a good point. The other guys in your band, may, while maybe not as active outside of the group as you are, they all have other things that they do and can do as well. So it's not like you were the only guy doing some, some I no. guess, moonlighting, you know? No. So, so you don't know... I mean, look, the vibe I get from this as a fan, I can't see this lasting. Even if it's a, a, an album, a, a tour, I, I just... There are very few drummers, and I'm not saying this just because you're a friend, but in all honesty, I mean, there are very, very few drummers, let's face it, who are irreplaceable, who are key members to their bands. Right. And most, you know, as much as I love drumming and you and everything, the reality is most bands, if they have to change out the drummer, they don't skip a beat, and it's it, it doesn't cost them a ticket, right. and it's it's not a big deal. Uh, clearly, that is so not the case with you and your role well, in Dream Theater. The, the two situations I could think of that are similar is Tommy Lee with Motley Crue and maybe Phil Collins with Genesis. And in both of those cases, they both left. And in both of those cases, they came back. So you know what? I mean, maybe maybe that would be the case here. I don't know. But to be honest with you, Eddie, I mean, to me, the, the thing that is so weird about this is that my role in Dream Theater just went so beyond the drumming. Honestly, I think there's thousands of drummers that could walk into Dream Theater right now and do a great job, a great job drumming-wise. But what about you know the other thousand things that I had to do in Dream Theater? Right. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, from writing to singing to the set list to you know you 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 steered the ship in a lot of ways. I mean, th th these guys are going to, I think they'll have no problem getting a great drummer. There's lots of great drummers out there, but I think they're going to have to really step up, the, step up to the plate to cover all of the other responsibilities. You know, they're going to each have to put in 500% more to, to cover that ground. And uh, I guess they're up to it. You know, I've already seen, you know, John Petrucci doing Q&As on his website, which in all these years I've never seen him do. So I guess... I guess they're each going to step up to the plate and cover that, that ground that I used to cover. And, uh, you know, I, I never in a million years thought I would ever see a Dream Theater concert, and I'm, I'm looking forward to one day doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I can't also help but to think of a parallel a little bit here to the, uh, the situation that's floated around with Aerosmith for the last year or two, where Steven Tyler has had... He wants some downtime from Aerosmith. Right. He wants a break. He wants to recharge. He wants to do other things. And right. every time he says that, the other four guys say, well, we'll find a new singer. And I right. would think that the prospects of an Aerosmith without Tyler, to me, seem as crazy as a dream theater without Mike Portnoy. And again, I'm not blowing smoke, but yeah, there's all those intangibles and the role you play in that band. So... It's going to be interesting to to see what they do and right. and how this all unfolds. But if I'm a betting man, I have to sit here and say that it, it won't be more than a year or two before you return to that gig under some circumstance. Well, I mean, you know what? If that was to happen, then then I got what I wanted. <laughs> you know, I got my break from them, and they got what they wanted. They got to continue on, and then you know. Maybe a couple of years from now we can get back together and live happily ever after. You know, I, I don't know. But there's been so many cases, you know, you've seen it. History has shown, and I already cited Motley Crue and Genesis, but you could talk about, you know, Aerosmith went on without Joe Perry and Maiden went on without Bruce and Priest without Halford and, you know. Most of those, most of those. Back together and, and I would love if, if someday that happens with us. Right, but most of those scenarios, Mike, as you know, being the music fan that you are, were for the most part very unsuccessful. Well, I don't wish that upon Dream Theater. No, I'm not I, saying you, know. you do. I'm just talking about, you know, the, 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 all those instances you mentioned, for the most part, were, you know, not successful and the other member had to come back eventually. Right. Well, I don't know. It, the, the whole thing is, 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 is as tough for me to swallow as it is for the fans and you know I, I feel really bad for the fans because I've, I've spent my entire career making decisions 
for them and trying to, you know, feed the fan base. And I know this is one decision that wouldn't be a popular one with the fans, but, you know, for once in my life, for once, I had to do what Mike Portnoy felt was right and not, you know, what was best for Dream Theater. I mean, what would have been best, best for Dream Theater, in my opinion, would have been to just take a few years off and, and everybody do their own thing, recharge the batteries and come together. But, you know, we're five different people with five different personalities and, you know, I guess, uh, you know, we differed on that subject. Personally, I think it's all a brilliant marketing scheme to yeah. set up the reunion tour. <laughs> you know, somebody consult. Gene Simmons got in your ear and said, right. Mike, this is what you need to do. You're right. close to arena status with this band. <laughs> you must leave and then come back triumphantly. Well, I would, I would hate. You know, you know, we've mentioned these other scenarios that have all come back together. The thing that scares the crap out of me, though, is, you know, I, I see a similarity to maybe Roger Waters with Pink Floyd. That never came back together, you know, and that, that scares the crap out of me. I, it, it would be a tragedy if I never got to be on stage with Dream Theater again. Yeah, but that's based, as we just covered in this discussion, your situation with Dream Theater, at least as it stands now, is very different. You you, you guys both, nobody hates each other. There's no real right. issues. This was just uh, a stalemate for the most part. You yeah. know, that situation is based in ugliness. And unless right. this that's turns well, that's ugly... A good, that's a good point. Good yeah, unless, point. unless this turns ugly, I don't see where that would ever be the same right. level. Well, as long as we all stay off the internet... <laughs> I, I've been finding the last couple of days, every time I go on the internet, it makes me crazy, you know. And then when I turn off the computer and I just am in my own head, I'm at peace. I'm at peace with this. I really am. I'm depressed and sad and shocked over it. But I am indeed at peace with it. And I think it was the right thing because yeah, I had to follow my heart. I, I can't, I've never been a fake or a BS person, you know. And, and I was, if I was to be forced to go into the studio in January, I would feel resentments and, and you know, and I, I, I can't do that. I need to I need to love what I'm doing. And I've never done a project or an album or, or anything with any other musician that I didn't believe in. Well, just before I let you go here, because I'm out, of, I, I'm coming up on a break. Um, you're out with Avenged Sevenfold, which is going to continue into the new year. So at this point, you're just going to hold with that gig and continue playing with those guys. And imagine you're having fun doing it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I am indeed having a great time with these guys, so there's, there's no denying that. And, I'm, you know, they're, they're a great bunch of guys. The show is awesome. Their fans are awesome, and they've been great to me. So, uh, you know, the thing with them is, is they need to take small baby steps because of, you know, the situation they just went through with, with their drummer dying. So they're really in no rush to get a permanent drummer, and they're taking baby steps one day at a time. And uh, now that that's, I'm in the same boat now because I don't want to make any major decisions right now either. And now I'm going to take baby steps and just take this one day at a time. And, you know, and I guess right now there's no pressure for me and there's no pressure for them to make any decisions, you know, for a while now. We can just carry on with their tour and uh, we have the luxury of, of time now without any pressure hanging over either of our heads. So uh, I'll carry on with them and then uh, when the time comes that I have to make a decision to do something else, I'll, I'll climb that hill when I get there. But, you know, right now, uh, it's, you know, it's nice to not have the pressure and, and I could just play. Right. Well, listen, man, I mean, I know this is tough for you. I can hear it in your voice. And, uh... Yeah, it is. And, and you know, it, it's been tough to talk about it. And I hope I didn't say anything that's misinterpreted because, you know, I, I know it's a very touchy subject with our fans and a very confusing thing for our fans to, to understand. So... Hopefully it will make sense and, and uh, you know, and, and it will be accepted and everybody can move on happily. And, you know, there is uh, 25 years of, of great music, you know, that will always be there to listen to. And, and that will never change. Well, I, I think you were very clear about where you came from. And, uh, you know, and, and, to, and just to be fair here, again, uh, it's no secret you and I are close friends, but I... I would certainly welcome you know the, the, any of the DT guys uh, to, to call in or come on in the next couple of weeks and you know explain themselves too. I mean, I, I think what's nice about this as it stands right now 
is as you said there there's no you know there's maybe confusion there's a little bit of hurt but there's no real hostility here this isn't an ugly situation this is just no. four guys wanting to go one way you wanting to break and and you'll see what happens down the road so you know we love each other and we're brothers we're just you know we're not the same people we're very different people um you know i you've seen it you know we've been friends forever and, and i always hang out and i'm always friends with with lots of people whether it be you or jericho or whoever and you know the, the dream theater guy is a little bit more mellow they keep more to themselves and you know so you know we may be brothers and we may be in the same band for 25 years but we are also different personalities and sometimes personalities need need a breathe some breathing time from each other well, listen, man, I, I wish you well, and uh, I'll be talking to you. And when you, you know, safe travels out there with the Avenged guys, and, you, you know, stay off the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Trust me, I do, because it's 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 just brutal. I, I can't even go in my own chat room half the time. Right. So you got to be careful with that stuff and take that with a grain of salt. But, yeah. you know, b b you know, see how, you know, see what happens. I, I, I'm optimistic here. I mean, I know there, okay, maybe there's going to be a, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a period here where we'll get to see what Dream Theater is like with someone else in there. But I I feel as I sit here talking to you that uh, there will be a day where we will see this uh, come back around. I hope so. And they hope so. So that's the most bizarre thing about this. <laughs> you know, I think we just we just needed a break. And, uh, you know, I guess this is this will be it. And and, uh, you know, hopefully one day they'll uh, they'll be another another chapter of us together. All right, Mike. Love you, Thanks, bro. Eddie. Thanks for doing this. All right, I man. I love you. It. Thanks for having me, man. Anytime. And safe travels out there. Say hi to the Avenged guys, and uh, I'll right. be talking to you soon, bro. All right, man. Thank you. Yep, see ya. There he goes. Mike Portnoy, hard to believe, the former drummer in Dream Theater. Uh, we'll be back and maybe get into some DT and also welcome in the Black Country Communion guys a little later on in the second hour. It's Eddie Trunk. An exclusive for you, Mike Portnoy, now the former drummer of Dream Theater, talking about what went down in his future plans. And I uh, thank him for that exclusive moment. We'll be back with two more hours of the show right after this.